Welcome back to another episode of Wind Over Water. We're just getting ourselves ready to get back on board Windover and to get some work done for this coming spring. We're going to launch at the end of April this year, quite a bit earlier than last season, thank goodness. So uh, we've got to cram a lot of work into a very short period of time. Uh, some of that work required us to get some parts from our sponsors. We wanted to familiarize you with some of the goods today. We've got one more backyard boat find to share with you and this week we've gone back again to Ralph's place. Uh, Ralph had purchased, as you might recall, a fleet of boats that he rented out and he's since closed that business down. It was a classic sailboat rental company and he still has in his possession two just lovely classic sailboats that uh, we've, we've uh, gone and done backyard reviews on. got a nice little surprise in the mail the other day we want to share with you. It's from our favorite stainless steel supplier. Uh, this company we initially got in touch with to uh, deal with the lifelines that need to be replaced on Windover. they sent us was frankly incredible. First of all, uh, as some of you may know, I think I've talked about this already and we certainly saw this on an earlier episode where I brought in uh, I brought in a used boom from Nye Boatworks. Our good friend Nathan there gave us. Um, that boom is going to be restored and these three rollers are going to be modified. They're going to be modified with little wings sort of and they're going to be uh, inset into our boom so that they create a roller surface for uh, it's an entry or exit block for the lines. They've also sent us some substantial shackles. And these shackles are ones that, that we would use for uh, things like our halyards on our main and on our jib. Now the unique thing about these is they are actually uh, set with an allen key and once you crank that tight they lock and there's no little tab on the end to catch on anything so it's a nice smooth install and uh, probably a safer way especially things like jib halyards that are left installed all the time and are not being undone and done up again very often. This is a great product. So, And here's another one of these no snag uh, features. I'm going to use these ones on our outhaul and on our uh, mainsail uh, because they're left there relatively permanently throughout the course of the year. Uh, if I have to open them then I can just go get an Allen screw and undo them. Saves on uh, getting your, your, uh, your sail hooked up on it. I have torn my mainsail on the thumb screw on this uh, 90 degree bent uh, shackle, one like this. And I've eliminated now that problem by getting the no snag. Beautiful product. There's going to be some external lines on this new boom and we need to lead them fair. For that we'll need fair leads. And these are just lovely stainless fair leads. They also come with a base plate. When you put dissimilar metals against one another, what happens is they react. Certainly stainless and aluminum do, so it comes with a really nice rubber gasket. So that will sit underneath it. Very handy. So if you all can see that, this is the design we have for our new boom. So our plan is to get a vang and, and eventually a rigid vang 
so I can eliminate the topping lip, but for now we're going to use a rope vang, which will have a, a 2 to 1, 4 to 1 purchase, I guess it is. Um, that is going to go through the block that's existing on deck and then back into the cockpit again. The main sheet will go in through one of these rollers. And that'll, that'll be right at the stern here, right at the back end of the boom. It'll enter the, enter the boom here, travel through the interior of it, and it'll exit here, down to the deck and then back into the cockpit. So I'll be able to run the main sheet from the cockpit. Uh, the topping lift will attach to a swivel that's at the back, right here. There's a uh, stainless swivel that's at the back. And uh, whether we do that with uh, a clevis or uh, even just tie it on there, we could do a nice bowl in there just to hold it for now, temporarily at least. It's a fixed hopping lift that's on Windover and that uh, uh, doesn't allow for much adjustability and makes things a little difficult. So uh, for now we're, go we're going to be making do, but eventually what I'd like to do is have either a rigid fang here or run this up through a block at the top of the mast that'll provide us with some adjustability. Then we're going to be adding cheek blocks here and here uh, to the uh, uh, boom for reef number one and reef number two. Uh, finally we're going to have an outhaul that's a pre-existing thing and that'll come off of Again, one of these rollers that will be right here at the back of the boom, the aft end of the boom. It will travel, that line will enter the boom here and will travel inside and it will come out a little exit plate. And the, all of them will congregate here at this spin lock. And there's a winch just forward of that spin lock that I'll be able to tension them. So we'll be able to tension our reefs and everything while we're at the mast. Also, I'm rebuilding the... Uh, gooseneck there again and not the half that's on the mast but the half that's on the boom so we've got to rebuild that. Thank you very much Suncor Stainless and we look forward to getting all this stuff installed. One of the challenges we've had with our new boat is uh, getting the dinghy uh, motor up and on the uh, on the rail and with some of you folks I know who uh, whose backs aren't as good as they used to be or who are alone even um, uh, you'll know what I'm talking about when you say it's it's difficult to find a place or a way to store your outboard motor and um, get it up and get it off again. Now Debbie and I have a nice system and we used that system when we went south together and it worked very very well but with this new bigger outboard and somewhat higher freeboard of the new boat we've been finding it difficult to get the outboard up and on the rail. We contacted Simple System Marine because they make a product called the better bracket. Uh, Paul and Steve were very receptive to our call and uh, right away shipped us out some samples on the product that we want to share with you today. Now this is the bracket they sent us. It's their deluxe bracket and it's actually made for inch and a quarter or you can get a kit to modify it down and it'll go on to our one inch rail. The heavier bracket is used for heavier outboards, so if you've got a big four-stroke 15, let's say, you're going to want the deluxe one. They make a lighter one as well that's good for, you know, a four-horse, a uh, little four-horse two-stroke or something like that. Uh, but for the larger uh, outboards, you'll certainly want the beefier bracket. Now, for you folks who don't need the big bracket but just want something small or uh, who want to set it on a T-rail, they also make a one-inch T-rail design. And uh, so that has a spot here for your upright to go through and it fits right over top of the upright, upright in the T. Really well thought out. Also I should say inside here they've this hole here is larger as you come inside and then goes back down again to one inch. That extra space inside will accommodate a very slight bend so really a well thought out product. This is a product called Starboard, which many of you are familiar with, and it is uh, really, really a tough, uh, tough material. Top of the bracket, it's capped with stainless steel, and it's a, a textured stainless steel as well, so when you put your outboard clamps over top of it, it's not as apt to slip around. It also has an adjustable rail here that goes up and down, and this, this adjusts just with a simple socket wrench. So rather than having to drill holes, to match up where you'd bolt it to your rail, you can just loosen this off 
and adjust it to fit the rail on your boat. Really a nice system and uh, really, really heavy and durable as well. Here's the coolest thing about this. Normally when you get a rail mount, the hole is somewhat lower down. This company has thought this through and they put the hole as close to the top as they can and then they've reinforced it with this stainless steel. What you get is a motor bracket that's as low as it possibly can go on the rail and it it's, uh, makes it easier for you to lift the motor on and off of it. So really an ingenious little product and uh, we're going to mount that on our boat very very shortly and uh, we'll bring you folks along and let you have a look at it. We want to thank Simple System Marine for their uh, generosity and we look forward to having a better bracket. I'll bet you're all anxious to see this week's Backyard Boat Find. This will be the last one of the season, folks. Uh, we're going to get back to doing uh, refit work on Windover. Uh, we have a real special one for you today. Uh, it's uh, a boat that isn't often seen in Canada. And it's a real shippy, classic looking boat. You know I like that kind of thing. Uh, so this boat is uh, uh, a small pocket cruiser. Uh, but it's too big for its britches, if you know what I mean. We're going to go and have a look at a Kenner Privateer. This privateer is rigged as a catch. Kenner Boat Company built this model from 1966 through to 1974. She has a length overall of just under 32 feet. Her narrow beam, shallow draft, and light weight make her easy to tow on her trailer. The company was founded by Bill and Dick Kenner. Since the late 50s, they've been building small fiberglass runabouts under the name Kencraft. By the 1960s, Kenner was building all kinds of fiberglass boats, both power and sail, as well as houseboats. This privateer came rigged as a catch, but you could buy it as a cutter or as a schooner like this jaw-dropping beauty. The first thing that strikes you when you get on this boat is the amount of bronze hardware that's on it. It's just dripping in it. This and other traditional features harken back to the early days of sailing and make the Kenner Privateer one of the prettiest vintage boats on the water.
I have to apologize. The day we were there, we got in a little late and we uh, were losing our light, so I had to go through the boat really quickly with a flashlight. Down below, she's really ornate. Lots of wood, lots of bronze again, just uh, just like the top sides. She's got a head with a porta potty, and uh, she's got running water on her. Unfortunately, there's no galley, and uh, I guess she's really set up as a day sailor, you know, kind of a, a pretty boat that can uh, sit out in front of a, a beautiful cottage in the Thousand Islands, say. Now, she has been an ongoing project for the owner, and there are a number of things that need to be done, including addressing that lack of galley. Uh, the owner had planned to put a taft rail in the back, uh, a little bit of woodwork uh, needs to be cleaned up as well, and there's some fiberglass work that needs to be done on the decks. The boat does come with a John Deere motor that's built by Yanmar. It's just got a different color of paint on it. But it only has uh, 150 hours or something like that on it. There will be two prices for this boat. Uh, if the owner finishes off all of his projects, uh, the price would be considerably higher. And uh, someone could buy it now at a discounted price if they want to take on the work themselves. Down below, she's in really good condition, though. I, I was very surprised at the quality of the workmanship and uh, the, how, uh, how nice the wood was. enjoying these videos be sure and click the like button uh, also we'd like you to join us every week if you can we'll send you notifications and it doesn't cost you anything so click on that uh, subscribe button down below you can a little wind over water link that's down in the bottom corner here will take you right to that now if you folks really enjoy these videos and you want to help us in their production you can do so by going to patreon there's a link down below this video and uh, at Patreon you can pledge to kick in a couple of dollars for each video as they come out and you'd help us with the expenses. So thank you very much for joining us and uh, we look forward to seeing you all next time here on Wind Over Water. Take care. seriously upon us now and uh, welcome back to another